Oh, it's the Waiver Wire Show. Big time show for a big time week. We are almost to the fantasy playoffs. Not only do you need to know who to pick up, but we've got some ah, we've got some uh, traps to avoid, and we're going to discuss what you should do with Voldemort. Make sure you like this video, uh, leave a comment, let us know how it's going for you in your fantasy run, and enjoy the show. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, November 29th. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. The. 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 We're the, the one. The. The one, Jason. The one. We had a thing going and you messed it up. I was adding with the one. Yeah, but you downgraded us to the. Okay, I apologize. The is very superior to the. Yeah, I mean, it's, we've always been a the, so why change us to a the? I'd like to apologize. apologize. Yeah. Also, redo my the, family. Redo the voiceover for the. The intro. Oh, I <clears throat> make yeah. a note. V. <laughs> Got it. At the FF Ballers on Twitter, by the way. One E. <laughs> right. No, I don't want the. it to be I don't want it to be confusing. Right. No, now somebody's gonna register that account. <laughs> Grab uh, it quick. <laughs> Instagram.com slash the fantasy footballers. So uh, that's not true. It's Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. I threw the V in there on accident. <laughs> uh thank you for following us over on Spotify, YouTube dot com slash the fantasy footballer subscribe click the bell catch mike on sunday live or this week catch jason, oh, yeah. jason on sunday live oh jason's filling yes huh? sir and uh join the foot.com our fantasy football community the mighty mm -hmm. the strong the thick <laughs> <laughs> we've been to those live shows yeah pa packing it away we 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 represent everyone. Team Hefty Boys represent. <laughs> I'm a man of the people yeah. over here. Uh, the hashtag Thanksgiving giveaway for the Megalodon episode has been complete. Congratulations to uh, CD Lamb signed jersey goes to Andy Rutherford. All right, congratulations, Andy. Who has to be some sort of sheriff? I just feel like it's a sheriff's with name. with a name Rutherford. like Rutherford. Rutherford. Sheriff a, a, a sheriff. <laughs> you got that? <laughs> no. Sheriff of a small town. Uh, Population the, 25. The Miles Sanders signed jersey goes to Travis Parsons. Congratulations. And uh, the Stefan Diggs signed mini helmet. Won by David Kirst. Congratulations, everybody. Check your Twitter notifications. Uh, our team has reached out with your reward. Did we reach out with a verified account? I don't know. I mean, I really don't. Al, I don't even know what a verified account is. I, I made a public post tagging the winners to DM me. Yeah, but are you a verified account? I am not. Oh, man. What a loser. Uh, you didn't buy in with that small window when you could have? I did not. I'm surprised. Yeah, he can't sign up now. Yeah. But congratulations. Thanksgiving is over. Thickless Chubb took care of business. <laughs> Monday night recap, we had the joy of watching the Steelers take on the Colts. Now that both teams are, uh, are they both four and seven now? Or I guess uh, that was probably before the game, or is that after the game? The Colts have a tie from yeah. week one. Oh, that's the right. That's right. Uh, the Colts, Matt Ryan, I think he had 19 first half passing yards. Jonathan Taylor looked good. Michael Pittman. He did all right. We built this city. He did all I right. I think 100% of people will take seven for 61 and a touchdown. Absolutely. So uh, that was nice. Jel Jelani Woods led yeah. the way. What? <laughs> what in the world? Every play in the second half was to a tight end. Uh, and, well, and usually Jelani yeah, Woods. Yeah, Woods. I mean, Molly Cox was involved too, but it was just crazy. It was like the they only threw the, to their tight ends for a large chunk of this game. Matt Ryan has never been uh, more afraid of a pass rush than anyone I've ever seen. Uh, he, 
He, if you protect him, he's good. If if there is any semblance of there's going to be a defender near me, oh my goodness! It's yeah, like see them wheels. Oh, oh yeah, he unleashed he got out again and, and ran. I mean, that's late career quarterback play, right? You can't move. You're afraid. Geriatric pocket. The the hits hurt a lot more, I'm sure. Yeah. So, uh, you know, couldn't get it done. Had the Jeff Saturday timeout controversy at the end. Yeah. Yeah, what happened? He defended himself saying they did not need to, but the <laughs> entire world. I mean, I, I'm, I'm assuming you guys were staring at your screen going like, I was call it. I was passing no judgment. I was like, call a timeout. Why aren't you getting up and calling a timeout? What is happening? And then, you know, it, I think their plays could have been more well formulated had they been able to regroup. But the Steelers had no idea that the run was coming on third down. I mean, he's not Jeff Monday. Nope. So can't really blame him for that. Nope. I mean, just really, really good overall head coaching. Najee Harris mm. knocked out. After a touchdown with an <sighs> abdominal injury. Yeah. We don't know the severity yet. Obviously, he was ruled out in that game pretty quickly, and so that leads us to worry. And the, on today's waiver wire show, we're going to talk about the backups, one of which is injured, um, and the other is not good. But uh, Benny Snell did score game. a touchdown. He in didn't this just one. score a touchdown. He looked good against the Indianapolis Colts, 12 for 62. So he'll be featured today. Yeah, he's, it's a very difficult decision. And then George Pickens led the way yardage-wise. Him and Deontay didn't really get it done for fantasy. Neither scored. Uh, Pickens was 3 for 57, had another highlight reel. He has one a week down the sideline. Does something special to catch the football, but no touchdowns. In this one, they went to the running backs. Steelers eke out the win. Anything else from this game? I mean, Paris Campbell really uh, yeah. replaced by Jelani Woods this one week, at least. It was very strange. Yeah, I don't think that's prescriptive. The only other thing I would say is Kenny Pickett, was, he looked a lot better to me this week. It, it's nice to see a rookie improve upon what you've been seeing. That was sure. my only other takeaway. Was not picked off. Little little uh, glimmer of hope for the future. Okay. All right. We like glimmers. I love hope. <laughs> News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. I didn't even see this news yet. What? Melvin Gordon. You missed this? Expected to sign with the Chiefs practice squad? Yeah. Wow. Did you take yes. the afternoon <laughs> off? Like, this was huge news. I, I missed you it. You missed all your alerts. Yeah, I Melvin Gordon. I completely missed that alert. This one is also interesting. I mean, the fact that the Chiefs claimed him. Hey, look, he's on the practice squad. They've already said that the plan is he'll go to the practice squad, work his way up. I mean, Isaiah Pacheco has been delivering what they have, far more than you could possibly have hoped for from a uh, seventh round rookie running back. But this, like, over the course of the next month, this at least could shake things up. So, if, like, if you've got uh, Pacheco or McKinnon, I mean, you at least have to be. You can't just sit back and be like, yep, got it locked down. I got the Chiefs guys. He'll, I got the runner. I got the pass catcher. Melvin Gordon could screw be everything up. up. Yeah, he'll probably be called up. Uh, he plays the Denver Broncos twice uh, the rest of the season. I'm sure that's partially why he signed there. And I expect in the offseason him to sign with the Raiders. Complete oh, he has, the I mean, he has to. Complete the division. He's, he's just going to stay right there and go all four teams and then retire. 21-day window open for J.K. Dobbins to return. He's been out since week six after surgery. Uh, Dobbins will, quote, practice in some degree, says uh, Mr. Harbaugh. But the time is not yet for you. The likelihood of him contributing to your playoff roster is low, but it's worth monitoring because, you know, you might have just lost Najee or uh, Mostert or one of these running backs that – you know, ETN might not play. There's a right. lot of – there's always question marks. Yeah, running I feel like Dobbins coming back isn't even a pro-Dobbins thing. It's just an anti-Gus Edwards uh, situation. I'm not sure that I would – I mean, how long would Dobbins have to be back and do something to where you feel confident starting him and it's not just a rotation with Dobbins and sure, Gus and Drake? and If he was back in two weeks and 
did something, then maybe he slides into a playoff lineup. That's about it. Yeah. All right, Donald Mooney out for the season, ankle injury. It's a bummer. Joe Mixon expected to clear concussion protocol by this week's game against the Chiefs. They could use him in that game. Uh, I think he's going to be back. Matthew Stafford remains in the protocol. I don't know if we see him again this year. That team is circling the drain. See, and then Aaron Donald picked up a injury as well. He did, yeah. And the line went, whoo! Yeah, he, he got a high ankle sprain. He's probably going to – I'm guessing that they just put him on the shelf for the rest I of have, the season. I have two defenses this upcoming week that I thought – like I thought it was an obvious one, like the Browns. I was like, they play Houston. Sure. S sounds like a great defense to play. It does. But fantasy-wise, the Browns are dead last in the NFL in terms of fantasy points scored. And then you've got these Rams just sitting there, and you're like, do you just play the defense against the Rams above yes, the you, Texans? Oh. Uh, Above the Houston matchup is tough, but in general, it's going to be a delightful thing for fantasy. I mean, it, that's that's always a difficult thing. Who is it? It's Seattle. Seattle is like the fourth or fifth ranked defense, and they play the Rams. Yeah. So, uh, you know who to target now? Rams, I would say Saints, um, which Tampa plays the Saints. Broncos. Texans, Broncos, yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about that today. Michael Carter, low ankle sprain, day to day. Not a high ankle sprain. But still a full real ankle sprain that knocked him out of a game and could easily keep him out of this coming week. Elijah Mitchell, six to eight week injury. Dude. Sayonara. This has been the Elijah Mitchell career story. Yeah. It, it Probably sucks. five to six injuries in two years. Burns yeah. too bright. Runs too hot. Yeah, I mean, in, in this game again, the him versus like Christian McCaffrey is is an excellent all around running back. But when you had Elijah Mitchell come in, the difference of speed was very apparent. Like Elijah Mitchell is so fast, but very aggressive his downhill body runner. Like it. Good for this offense. Goodbye. Yeah. Jameson Williams could return to play Sunday, uh, but I, I had seen other comments from Dan Campbell this week. It is not going to happen, but he could be back the week after. Yeah. 100%. And maybe maybe later than that, really. Josh Jacobs. Well, it can't be much later, right? Because they open his 21 day window, and I believe the rule is if you don't come back in those 21 yeah, days, you're shut down. then you're shut down. So, well, they could activate him, but barely play him too. Yep. Right. Uh, Josh Jacobs not expected to practice much at all this week because of the calf strain. He will get treatment to play against the Chargers. If he plays against the Chargers, he will dominate them. Yeah, the James Chargers Connor just did are so bad against the run. But if he doesn't play, there's. As Mike said this morning, yes, uh, I'll let you say but that there's gold in them, their heels. Yeah, with I mean, the Steelers who play the Falcons, the Raiders who play the Chargers, like and running back injuries, just real ambiguous situations that you got to sift through and make some decisions. That we should do a waiver show. Let's do it. We should. That was today's news and notes, brought to you by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com/insurance. Welcome to The Fold, presented by Samsung Galaxy. Cardinals and Panthers heading into the bye week 13. No bye weeks with the Deucers Alley. I mean, we've got the full crew today. Fine. Never. Um, Never. <laughs> Never a bye week. No bye weeks. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, I mean they don't. I mean they don't take too many days off over no, there. Not too many. Kyle does, but uh, bunch of rap scallions. The uh, I like that we have the Cardinals and the Panthers on on the bye this week. Then because they had to save up for next week for it to be the Bears, Colts, Commanders, Falcons, Packers, Saints. Six teams. Why on don't bye. we just take two of them and scooch them a little earlier? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and not only that, but a week fourteen bye week in general is just unfair to these teams. Yeah. It's so, I mean, even 13, it's like these teams need a break. They need rest. They need recovery. And then not only does a team have a week 14 by, but we're going to make six teams have a week 14 what, by. What's funny is only one of those six teams is in playoff contention in any way, shape, and form, really. Yeah, they could have used a bye week the commanders. Like a month ago. I don't know. Maybe it'll help them with that final push. I don't know. It's tough. It's tough on fantasy players. It's a late one. Didn't we have uh, – it wasn't McCaffrey a late buy last year or something? Yeah, something like that. We always remember that. He almost would have been this week, or because, but then he got traded. Wide receivers, 
Let's dive into which ones we want to welcome into the fold this week. There are some names uh, that are worth discussing. The number one name has to be the Zay Jones uh, situation because he's ultimate he's, spot starter. I mean, he, he's at 38% rostered is, is the reason I bring him up first. Every The other kind of four names on our waiver wire rankings, which you can find them all on our website. That's a new feature this year. The waiver wire ranks. Uh, all three of us, we put those guys in the order that we would pick them up. We mark players that would be stashes versus players that are pick up and start players. But the other three of the four names at the top are all over 60% roster, which is Traylon Burks, Paris Campbell, and Donovan Peoples-Jones. But Zay Jones plays Detroit, led the NFL in receiving yards last week, had 14 targets, 11 receptions. Uh, Detroit should score on Jacksonville. Jacksonville should score on Detroit. I looked at Zay Jones' season, and he's just outside that wide receiver three on the year, but he's only scored one time this entire year. Like, last week, he was the wide receiver five, did not score. The over-under is 51.5 for that game. He is the example of a player that has become more and more of a go-to receiver for his quarterback. Like, the rapport between Trevor Lawrence and Zay Jones has grown throughout the year. You know, Christian Kirk is, is obviously a, a huge contributor on that roster, and he scored all the touchdowns. I think Kirk has, like... Seven of them. But don't undervalue Zay Jones heading into your playoffs because certain players like this crop up and, and surprise people and win championships. Yeah, and, and you know, we we spoke about Trevor Lawrence yesterday, but Trevor Lawrence is he's getting it together. He's he's turning into the player that you hoped you were drafting when you took him number one overall. And if he continues to ascend I mean, this is just great news for Zay Jones and Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram and, you know, the whole group. But I, I definitely think a wide receiver, Zay Jones, with the matchup. And it's not just against Detroit, but it's in Detroit, which is where you want Detroit to play so that they can score and keep up. I, I, I pretty much love just about everybody in that matchup. I was just taking a look at Evan Ingram because I didn't remember him popping up last he, week. No, it was nothingness. It was what a Zay a, Jones What week. a crazy week with that many passing yards. Just one target? What the heck? How do you know when he's going to be good, Schmevin? Uh, when he plays Detroit <laughs> or Arizona <laughs> or Seattle. I mean, he, had, he he hasn't been the same since he got banged up. So Donovan Peoples-Jones, uh, disappointing week last week, plays Houston, new quarterback. It's worth just uh, paying attention to. I he, think it's uh, worth a lot paying attention to. the, uh, the Like the reason we liked you know, David and Joku – at draft season was Jacoby Brissett. His historical data is he targets the tight end position a lot. And then you go to Voldemort here, and Voldemort loves going down the field. And that Donovan Peoples Jones can fly. So like that th those skill sets tend to match up. So I I think that he is very interesting. And and has also already had like a, a pretty decent breakout campaign. Let me uh, let me bring up some names as well that I believe are trap names that will be chased by your league, and I would sign other players and let your league take these guys based on last week's performance. And there's actually three of them. Okay. Uh, number one is Elijah Moore, who had the touchdown but played 35% of snaps. Uh, number two is Matt Collins, who got into the end zone, but he had been, uh, even though he had been out there a lot, not a lot of fantasy points. And then number three would be Isaiah McKenzie, who I know we all want him to be a thing because he's sometimes a thing, but week 11 was a goose. Last week was good. That's a tough one facing New England. What do you think of those three? Do you agree? Do you think that uh, – do you have more belief than I do about those – because they're all touchdown guys from last week. Yeah, it, it's certainly um, three players who are inconsistent. So saying it's a trap is – they're not guarantees here at all. Um, Isaiah McKenzie, you, you had some stuff that really showed well. 73% of snaps played. That was very high for him. Uh, he's getting more and more involved. Uh, and so I like that data, but as far as someone that you're going to pick up and play this week, I don't love playing against New England in general. So if I was to pick one of those three guys that I would actually want to throw out there for the week, even though I think Elijah Moore is the most talented, he's got a good matchup. He only had, what, two targets? That's right. So I think it would be Matt Collins because the Chargers, 
defense is just dying and their offense is getting it together. They're going to score. I think that's just a, a a matchup where you're going to have enough volume where a spot start. I, I see Matt Collins as, as someone that you could throw in a lineup, especially in any PPR. He did have nine targets the week before. Last week was that uh, trick play for the touchdown, but um, Mike, do you agree with that? Yeah, and McKenzie, like we're again, we're looking forward a little bit. the The next two matchups for the Bills for McKenzie, with you have the Jets, or I'm sorry, the Patriots, and then the Jets. That's not fantastic, but if you're trying to take a longer term view, the Miami Dolphins followed up by the Chicago Bears. Those are those are far juicier. So if you're if you're not making a move for this week. I think that McKenzie should be on benches at least. Is there another name at the wide receiver position deeper in these rankings that you want to mention? Because I see stashes like Jamison Williams, Odell Beckham, who that's the trap. You know the, <laughs> oh, the, the yeah trap? the sweep the sweepstakes. I mean, I think Dallas is, you know, they're by far the odds on favorite to land him. He, he's like two to one in Vegas versus yeah. everyone else. It's like six to one, seven to one. They're because I mean they're going to sign Beckham. Like Odell Beckham, if you didn't see it, had an incident with uh, he got removed from an airplane. Yeah. Um, we don't know exactly what happens. Uh, whatever. We won't. I, we know what happened, but I'm not going to make my speculations on the air. Uh, but then Jerry Jones was like, "Eh, I don't care. <laughs> I do not care about this off the field incident. Come to the Dallas Cowboys here, Odell Beckham." So, I think that that's. Uh, I think it's pretty close to a lock that that's where he's going. And Jason, go. you said that's a trap. How come? Well, I, I I think that a player who hasn't signed for this long, who's still coming off the ACL injury, you're, it's just difficult for me to imagine. Okay, he hasn't signed with the team yet, so now I've I've picked him up two weeks ago or last week or right now. Maybe he's available on waivers. I pick him up, and then he's going to get worked in probably slowly coming off the ACL. You know, signed to the practice squad, then come up. And then you, you. I don't think he'll be practice are, squad. Is there any world, any world where you could play him the first week he play? No. he signs. Not the first week, but the fact that like Michael Gallup, I, Gallup finally had sort of a good game there on Thanksgiving. Well, he looked but, good. But, he finally looked a yeah, little yeah, bit yeah. better off the injury. So perhaps that is the trend moving forward. Perhaps Michael Gallup is healthy off of his ACL recovery and he's good to go, and he's now the number two wide receiver. Or it was it, maybe it was an anomaly. We do, we don't have the ev enough uh, evidence here for Michael Gallup, Odell Beckham could just come in and, and take the number two job in a few weeks. He could, but that that's my point. It's like, if he doesn't sign this week, which right now, it, you know, it, it uh, there's no report that he's impending signing, so then he signs next week. So then... He practices he, for a week. He practices for a week. He has his first game. You don't play him. You're talking like this is three or four weeks from now where you could play him, and you're wasting roster spots. So uh, maybe he comes and he's just unfathomably great in his elder state off of his second ACL injury, and I'm wrong. But I, that's where I just feel like the if I'm you know you look at the odds of certain things happening and betting on probability. I think it's more probable that you're wasting a roster spot for a long period of time than there, having starting fantasy points in your roster. No, I agree. And then the window of stashing a player, it's closing. I mean, two weeks left for the fantasy till the fantasy playoffs. Like, you got to figure this stuff out sooner than later. Yeah, I was curious, is there any type of greatness that you can fathom? For Odell Beckham? No, 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 just in general. Like, you said he was he, he could be unfathomably great. I was just curious, if what is the greatness you can oh, fathom? fathomable greatness. Is, fathomable. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, that's like, I can fathom. You how, can wrap yourself around that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that wraps around me. Okay. That, that envelops me and is it warm? gives me that hope and that warmth that I love. Um, I'm not. I'm not a fan of these deep pickups at wide receiver. So there's there's two deep pickups at wide receiver that I think are maybe worth a shot. Okay. Um, it's a little bit chasing in DeAndre Carter, right? Because he's been on the field for eighty percent of snaps, you know, over the last month or so, and then all of a sudden this last week he got ten targets, seven for seventy three and one. He was like the guy. But there's been kind of a change here. This is where you got Keenan Allen back running the Keenan Allen role full time without Mike Williams Palmer seems like a good role for him yeah it's right his, it's really his best role so but in that first example of this offense you have Carter being really involved in the pecking order and 
Um, now you've got a great matchup, same matchup as Mac Jones. You've got the Raiders versus the Chargers. So I like maybe taking a shot at that. And the other one is Sky Moore. Sky Moore looked really good for a couple of weeks. He's a rookie. You expect the end of the year for them to break out. Juju came back from his concussion and wasn't worked all the way back in. Maybe that is because they're taking it slow with him. Maybe part of that is because Sky Moore is looking better and better and has earned his way on the field. He had a 40% targets per route run in Week 12, which is an awesome number. So Sky Moore is someone that I would prefer to stash over like an Odell Beckham. It was actually his highest snaps of the year at 46% for Sky Moore. Well, they got to play him somewhere because he can't return. Do points. not have him <laughs> back there to catch the punt. He doesn't do it well. Drop candidates. I drop. Uh, two thirds of these, Jahan Dotson and Curtis Samuel, you can you can drop. Yeah, uh, Alan Lazard, you can bench. I w I wouldn't drop him, but yeah, he's, I agree. It's been a it's been a rough three weeks. Christian Watson, Randall Cobb's return. Cobb's gotten into the end zone. And you got uh, such a good matchup against Chicago this week. But who's the quarterback? Yeah, I know, I know. That's that's the tough thing. I wanted to make uh, the 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 Green Bay quarterback the start of the week this week for me. But I just don't think I can well, do it if it's Rodgers. Oh, if it's Rodgers. Yeah, if it's Rodgers, I, I I worry about the injury affecting his ability. If if it's to me, if, if it's Jordan Love, I'm not in either. If it's Jordan Love, I'm absolutely playing him against Chicago. Really? Yeah. Chicago is very Chicago's bad. Chicago's been very, the very, worst very bad. At, at everything on defense. And you can take a Christian Watson screen to the house, or you can have Love run the ball. Or throw a few pits. Sure, but that's where I love the Chicago matchup. Sure, yeah, that's a lot of confidence for Jordan Love. You guys, guys used to have to be persuaded to even think he could be something. That is true. That is true. Um, Stay water, my Chicago friends. Bears will do that. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, take a break. Get back with running backs. All right, let's dive into what running backs we're going to welcome into the fold this week. A lot of discussion to be had. And the top of the list is sort of players that they're probably on the Just rosters. Double check. They're, they're on the rosters of teams in your league. I mean, almost guaranteed if you're in a competitive league, these guys are taken. Brian Robinson, uh, big week last week, probably rostered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Samaj P. Ryan probably less relevant even now than yeah I'm, we I'm, thought uh i'm not gonna fight for him no, no. I'm, I'm gonna he was higher because we, we didn't have the full mix of news but with it trending more that mix will be back samaji p run will be moved down now the the majority of the big signings at running back are unfortunately extremely dependent on later in the week news so you have to shoot your shot with a lot of situations we don't know for certain. There's three teams, right? There's three teams, the Jets, the Steelers. Pittsburgh Steelers, and the Las Vegas Raiders, where you have question marks with the starting running back. You're not 100% so, yeah, sure. And the Jaguars. And the Jaguars, to a You're degree. You're not like, yeah. yeah yes. they, said he was, they said that Travis Etienne was cleared to come back, but he didn't. And it's just you don't know 100% that he's so, going to be good to go. Correct. Yeah, I think the uh, the way that I would, and we can all talk through this, I think that Michael Carter will miss a week. I agree. I agree. I think that Josh Jacobs will play. This team has won two straight overtime games. He just put up 300 yards. Um, I think the team has given us evidence that if he tells the team he can play, that he's going to play. He's actually been pretty um, – on the side of playing when these circumstances happen for Josh Jacobs. They they didn't pick up his fifth year option. So as brutal as that sounds, it's like just get every ounce of juice out of that, you know, s squeeze it till yeah, it I mean, he's dry. He's winning. He's winning games for them. And, and, and his situation is one where there's a platoon of backs behind him that don't give me the clarity when you combine that with him probably playing um, with the Steelers. That situation is really tough, too. Like, Jalen Warren's missed a lot of time. I don't think Jalen Warren's going to be given some... He's not going to get the full workload when Benny Snell played like that, and, and you know, he's coming off of an injury where he hasn't played. And I was looking into it. It's a hamstring injury. It was a full did not participate in practice all last week. So hamstrings, I don't even think he's back. I yeah, really don't. I don't either. That's what I was going to say. If I were to pick up Jalen Warren or Benny Snell, 
I would pick up Benny Snell for this week over Jalen Warren. Now they if, play Atlanta. If it turns yeah, out juicy. that if it turns out that uh, you know the the injury is more serious and you know Najee's put on IR, which I do not think that's happening. But because it was last night, we don't really have the news yet. Um, then I would pick up Jalen Warren because once he's back, I think he'll run ahead of Snell. But if I'm looking for this week, I would I would pick up Benny Snell over Jalen Warren. Now, now, Mike, if you're staring down Benny Snell or Jamichael Hasty, neither of them are rostered. Do you? And you have to you have to make Man. a gamble right now. They both yeah. have good matchups: Atlanta and Detroit. I lean Snell. I, I, I but would, I'm not. You know, I'm not certain that Etn walks right back into a full time role either. Like, if Najee plays. Benny Snell probably doesn't see the field very much. Yeah. Whereas Jamichael Hasty probably gets some snaps. Yeah, Jamichael Hasty, uh Jamichael Licious should be work especially in the, in the passing downs like cuz that's where he really excels. On the ground it was not great, 12 for 28. That's not who he is. Uh he's a pass catching satellite type of a running back, so he's interesting. If I have to like if it's just one of these guys I I think it's Snell. Because you're you're trying to buy wins right now. Longer term, I agree that should news break about Najee Harris, I'd prefer to have Jalen Warren. But I think I I think Zonovan Knight mm -hmm. for the Jets is actually at the time of this recording kind of the safest pick to be the one week starter. Like with with the ankle sprain for Michael Carter. And the Jets having a competent quarterback against Minnesota. Minnesota is just a very weird team that generally plays. However, the other team they like they play up to the level of their competition. It could be a good game. He produced. He was fourteen for sixty nine uh, on the ground. He had three targets. Like he Bam! was. He was the guy who came in. You would think. Well, Ty Johnson's the veteran. They're gonna no. He he stayed in his role, and Zonovan just replaced what Michael Carter was, what the Brees Hall role. And, I mean, James Robinson is still on that team, but he was a healthy scratch. That's, and I, that's so the, I think Zonovan's my go-to of the, the – of, of, if I'm shaking the Magic 8 ball, that's probably where we lay in. I, I the problem is that James Robinson will be active. Exactly. James yeah, Robinson he's, probably he's was not, not active. It was a healthy scratch, right? So he's not injured. It was the fact that they didn't think he would roll as the one or the two and – he probably is not involved in special teams. We see that all the time where a yep. uh, uh, running back is not active for a game because he's not a special teamer. Starter goes down to injury, and the next week that guy who wasn't active comes in and is the primary starter. That could really happen here. So James Robinson should be a pickup in his own right. Um, but I would agree with you. My number one order here is probably Zonovan. Bam! Um, no, I agree. I think he's the number one pickup. But what I'm doing here is – because there's uncertainty that this isn't really like a call your shot thing. This is completely out of your hands, medical information that we don't know yet. Maybe by, you know, late tonight when you're finishing your waivers, there is clarity and, and adjust accordingly. But right now, with all of these murky running back situations, I'm going to put in a bunch of offers on all of these players very, very cheaply. I'm not breaking my bank here. I'm putting out two, three dollar offers on everyone and I'm sorting it with my desired preference of order and then I'm just going to let the chips fall where they may in terms of stash candidates James Cook is once again on that list when you think of upside you know if something happened to Devin Singletary James Cook why well, did they huge. trade for Heinz yes what are they so doing? weird yeah I, don't, I mean I don't know it was like they've spent years just looking across the uh uh, the yard there, seeing other teams with these pass catching running running backs, like that's it. I think that's what we need. And then they got one. They're like, we we don't want this. It might be a bit of a playbook assimilation thing, and it might be more of a playoff target thing, where veteran Naeem Hines in the playoffs versus rookie James Cook in the playoffs handling certain situations. Um, we've certainly seen veterans make more of a contribution in the playoffs before. Uh, Deion Jackson back behind Jonathan Taylor, Madison Vaughn. Yeah, uh, now is the time you 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 want to be stashing your insurance running backs. I almost choked there. I did see that. Yeah, <clears throat> God, look, I'm still recovering, man. Still it reminded recovering. me. That reminded me of when we did our beach race, 
and you had the world's <laughs> oh the hiccups worst case of hiccups. That was brutal. For like an hour. Had to be over an hour. Had, had to, to be. I mean, Mike went it back was, to his room that night. It was excruciating. Still hiccuping. <laughs> if you've never experienced a, this a bout was of the hiccups. hiccups. Yeah, they, like you cannot control them at all. And they're <laughs> and they're very strong. And they just, it just lasts forever. You, they literally hurt your esophagus. Yes. It's like, ow, you, stop you it. You seem like you had something new. Like a new a new. I thought it was my disease. life. I thought you were going to die with that. Not like in the moment, but like the rest of the, your life. After about an hour, I was like, "Well, this is this is Mike now. This is the end. This is how he. This is how he yeah. lives." And uh, it, you know, but to, to yeah. speak to one more situation that is really kind of important because you want to start your insurance policy plan at least with the running backs that have an issue that could lead to them being held out, and that ultimately is San Francisco. Christian McCaffrey is dealing with an issue with his knee. I mean, Kyle Shanahan came out and said as much. So when you look at Jordan Mason, who had the opportunity. But this uh, is I the special teams thing as well. I, I agree. I know. And Ty Davis Price is involved. But Jordan Mason uh, looked all right. And so, you know, you shoot your shot there. Because sure. you're, you're one Christian McCaffrey sore knee away from a start for San Francisco. If you talk about a situation that you want a piece of, give me that. Yeah, but so you have Jordan Mason, who is a special teamer, so he got the opportunity. Ty Davis Price, third round rookie pick I this year, I believe. Was that a trade up? Is that right, Kyle? Third well, round. I, yeah, well, the trade up is usually that's the death sentence for, for sure for San Francisco. That's why players. I was worried. But he at least he has the the profile of he seems like he would be the next man up. Uh, like I, I imagine he will be active now that Elijah Mitchell is out. And then, quick back to the the Raiders. If you got, how are you prioritizing that? Are you going with Zamir White, the rookie, or are you going with Amir Abdullah, who it's so close, got the snaps with this past week with Jacobs? I, I'd go Zamir. I like usually going with the rookie, but whenever I've watched him, he just hasn't looked that good. Abdullah catches passes. So I kicks lean. guys during his celebration. <laughs> That's awesome. He gets flagged for it. <laughs> um, I uh, I lean Abdullah, but I agree it's so close. And this is again why I'm just going to order it in my preference, but I'm not spending up on any of these guys. If someone grabs Abdullah before me and I get Zamir White or vice versa, whatever. All right, tight ends we're welcoming into the fold this week. Look, I, I've I've had to sign a few, put in waiver claims. Not a good time. It really isn't. It's, no, it's a miserable time. It's basically like, I mean, the names <laughs> on this list, the names on this list are awful. I guess Hayden Hurst is at the top of it. Yep. But then beyond that, it's like Evan Ingram, one for four last week. Goose for Jawan Johnson? No. I don't want Higby if he's been dropped. Not with this offense. Hunter Henry looked really good. Should have had two touchdowns. He's probably second on my list. And if you play Foster Moreau, which you can do, You'll be happy if he scores, and you will be very unhappy if he doesn't. Well, you'll get 40 yards. Or 33. Yeah. So it's, 30 to 40. Yeah, it's not a great week um, for tight ends. Hunter Henry is, outside of Hayden Hurst, who's probably rostered, Hunter Henry is the most talented of the actual players. So if you want to bet on talent, go Hunter Henry. That being said... The matchup's good this week for New England. I want to bring that up because Mac Jones would – I mean, he's right razor thin on my stream of the week. Like, Buffalo is <laughs> – they're a disaster right now against the quarterback position over the last three games. When you compare what they did at the beginning, it's like red light, green light. Like, it's it's amazing how bad they've been. So, uh, I only say that because Mac Jones, they've been letting him throw down the field. I'm hoping there's a change to the offense that's taking place that could benefit a Hunter Henry. What about uh, Tyler Conklin? New York Jets, sure, well, not a ton. I mean, but on he is on the field, seventy nine percent of the snaps this past week, three for fifty. You have you have Mike go, White. I'd probably go Hurst, Conklin, Henry. Okay, I would go Hurst, Ingram, Henry. I I just I'm targeting the Detroit matchup. All right, let's uh, take a look at those team defenses. We alluded to them earlier. Cleveland plays Houston. Uh, like I said, that one it, it should be good. It's just a it, it will. It's just a little bit. It will be good. It's a little bit of a capped upside situation for some reason with Cleveland. Like they've had, they just haven't had any games this year where they've impressed on the defensive side of the football. 
I believe, obviously it's very early in the week, but I believe that is going to be a rainy game, which is usually very good for fumbles and defenses. Uh, you have Tampa against New Orleans. New Orleans got shut out last week. Tampa is, they need to win. They're at home. Green Bay takes on Chicago. That one is... Uh, that's that's If Justin Fields is correct. out, then I'm I'm happy to do it. And then I was uh, talking about it earlier. But I think Seattle against the Rams is the best one. Yeah, they might be the, the best. The Rams are closing up shop. They are <laughs> – the metal gate is being uh, lowered uh, over their storefront, and they're saying, uh, gone for the holidays. See you next year. See you next year. Enjoy your defensive streams. I can't wait till we get to talking about the start sit decision with Damian Pierce this week because oh, um, the – Browns are the are, are a yeah. terrible, terrible run defense. Yep. Like thirty first in the league, um, they give up twenty six points a game to the running back, and yet he has been. And now you saw Rex Burkhead; he's out. So Damian Pierce is Wait, sitting. He there. wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> like there's an official now. He's yeah. actually injured. Oh man! Yeah. So I, I, it's just going to be brutal because it, it's been. Then that, that means uh, Eno will get called up, right? Probably not. Well, I'm saying just yeah, you need probably. to have bodies. Yeah. You I can't mean, just have Damian Pierce as your only active running back. It'd be like, well, if he gets hurt, well, who cares? They what? have a couple other guys on the depth chart, right? I don't, I don't Cause, know. Because we, uh, we didn't have Eno called Was up. Like a Goomba Wale. Wale. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the one who got there into the go. end zone. And there you, you have, um, yeah, right now, Troy Hairston's the RB4, not Eno, I think. Yeah. Uh, so are you pri would you play the Browns or would you play the Seahawks? <sighs> like if you were prioritizing playing I, Houston or the Rams? Man, I I guess I, I would go Seattle because there it's been two awful, awful weeks from Damian Pierce. But there was a lot of really, really good weeks before that, so I would be a little bit hesitant that yeah, Damian Pierce could find himself again and have a big game. Yeah, Voldemort could throw a couple of quick interceptions short in the field for he these uh, Texans. Yeah, and and um, you know I'm sure he's not one of our stream of the weeks, but it is worth noting for waiver wire day waiver wire pickup. Voldemort is going to be a big pickup if he's yep. still on your waivers. Um, I I had him much lower in my rankings originally because I I do, I think when you're gone for two years, it, there's there's rust. There's it just would shock me to come back and be great right off the bat. But at the same time, when you're taking these waiver wire shots, I mean, there's there's reasons to not believe everybody that's on the waivers. You're looking for the upside case, and the upside case is he comes back and has his dark magic and does what he did before, where he's a top five quarterback option. He was the he's the second highest fantasy points per game behind Mahomes. Um, in the time in the duration of of when he played, so it was like twenty two fantasy points per game. Mahomes is at like twenty three point four over the last handful of years. So his upside, I mean, he's got Amari Cooper, he's got David Njoku, he's got Donovan Peoples Jones, he's got uh, some weapons, and and uh, we'll see what he has left in the tank. But I mean, what are you gonna do? You're gonna draft? You're gonna sign Derek Carr off of waiver wire? Yeah, you, no. you should pick up Voldemort and yeah. and give it a give it a chance. Uh, that was Welcome to the Fold, presented by Samsung Galaxy. The Galaxy Z Fold 4 makes multitasking easy, almost too easy. Use it to check player rankings, watch highlights, and view trade targets to improve your roster. All at the same time, visit Samsung.com to learn more. Full stream ahead. Well, I like your guys' streams more, so I'm going to let you lead the way. I uh, especially I'm, Jason's my number one. I'm perfectly yeah. It, it, Jason's is the top one, but okay. Well, well let's go. We'll go I'll go one. first. Then Trevor Lawrence. He has been really good as of late. He is going to Detroit, playing in a dome against a bad defense and a good offense. Since week six, he's actually the quarterback nine in points per game, and the Lions rank dead last in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to quarterbacks. Thirty eight percent of opposing pass attempts versus Detroit. End in a first down or a touchdown as the second highest percentage in the NFL. All right, Mike. Uh, it's it's Jimmy Handsome, Jimmy Garoppolo. He gets to play the Miami Dolphins. This is the reason that he is the streamer. Uh, the Dolphins are just so delightful. Uh, a tremendous offense, making the other team have to keep up. 
And since week five, Jimmy Garoppolo is the QB 10 uh, in Miami ranks 30th in schedule adjusted fantasy points to the quarterback. You, it, he should be all right. He's a, he's a, he's a fine floor play. Dig a little deeper and you've got Mike White against Dude, Minnesota. It's, uh, it, it's exciting. It's exciting here because it's, he's like, got the white stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not oh, great. Oh, 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 oh. I thought oh, you were doing oh, some weird. No, it, was, it was. It was the, definitely the white stuff. The like, it's a not the exact same situation, but it's like with Tua, where he's playing fantastic, but he just he has such incredible talent around him that it takes it to a whole other level. And if if Mike White really is competent to have the receivers that he has around him, like he should. He should succeed for fantasy. The last uh, the last two weeks, the Vikings are the best possible matchup that you could have this week. Um, they've given up a lot. Like, if you go to our schedule-adjusted stream finder tool. The, uh, the DAC explosion will help those. Well, yeah, they gave up. Uh, but they gave up a ton to Mac Jones last week. Yeah. Sure. Ten points over expectation. So, Mike White at home has weapons, explosive weapons, has a problem at running back right now where, you know, do they put more into his hands? And Minnesota is going to score, get theirs against the Jets. And I think Mac Jones is actually a good a good start this week as well. I think he has an opportunity against Buffalo. Like I said, Buffalo gave up ten points above expectation to Jacoby Brissett. They give up uh, two above expectation to Jared Goff. It's been an up and down year for their secondary, but I do rank White ahead of Jones, and I rank Lawrence ahead of all of them. Yeah. I I like Mike White quite a bit. It's funny when I saw the doc, you said I like uh, your guys is more than mine. I didn't see the names. I thought you had Jimmy G. I, I think Mike White is someone that should be picked up and played right now. Yeah, and I, I want to see it continue to happen. I'd like to see him have success. I want to see him uh, supply these wide receivers with value. And I, I got to give a lot just... of credit to this team for making that decision. Yeah, that's a hard one to make. But, I mean, with the weapons you have, I and mean, we saw it, right? Just get it. It's throw a, it to Garrett Wilson. Just throw it to Garrett Wilson <laughs> and even Elijah Moore where they can make plays. Get him the ball where they're not murdered upon receiving it, and then they can go make something happen. It's one of the things I like about the playbook with Mike White in the game is like there there are always, I want to say, four to five design screens to Garrett Wilson a game. But they weren't completions before. Mm -hmm. You know, they were they were air mails or uh, shoestrings. Like what was the quote from Robert Sala? It made easy look easy. Yes. Oh, man. Yes. Well done. That is the exact right quote because that was the problem with Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson could make hard look easy. He really did. How does but he made recover? easy look hard. Yeah. I, it's it's like, uh, I don't know if you saw the, and I don't want to like overpile on the 22-year-old Wilson, but I'm totally fine doing it. Uh, did you see him in the combine? Remember the throw where he faded yes. left and he threw? They were like, this combine... Yep. This one play, mm -hmm. the crossbody downfield dart that was so beautiful. It was like visions of Mahomes popped into their heads, and it undermined the rest of the package. The I normal think. stuff. The 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 throw it to the guy wide open ten yards from you. And didn't he have an incredible yeah. line situation His in college? Line in BYU was he was yeah BYU. Got yes. The, yeah, his offensive line was spectacular so being under pressure seeing those situations being put into that uh qu quicker you know mental place he's not ready that's all it is i mean it's like yeah, he has is the he gonna, tools is he gonna work to get there is he not i don't we don't know i mean justin fields looked like the world's biggest bust on earth and suddenly everyone's going oh they should have taken justin fields <laughs> like like things do change uh lawrence i mean they yeah lawrence is I coming mean, to life this this draft class of quarterbacks is uh, moving a little slower, I think. Yeah, then we just need Trey Lance to do something. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> that that was the message I had. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, that is going to do it for today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Check out the community at jointhefoot.com. Tomorrow we have Ride or Die Thursday night preview, some mailbag on the show, and uh, it's going to be a busy week as we get ready for those fantasy playoffs. I've still carved a small, low percentage chance that I can get into our League of Record playoffs. It just takes the ultimate demise of my good friend Mike Wright. I don't like that. 
<laughs> See you, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.